Now in this tutorial we're going to talk about the filmic blend technique. Now the idea behind the filmic blend technique is to make video look a little bit more like film. Film can often look quite a lot richer simply because video is made up of lots and lots of lines. 1080 if it's high definition video from the bottom to the top and each one of those lines has got a gap between them. Those gaps might be fairly small but that adds to the overall hollowness of video whereas film is a chemical process and there are no gaps so it tends to look a little bit richer. So the filmic blend technique was developed to fill in those gaps and so that we can make the overall result look a lot richer. Now you need to bear in mind that when you use the filmic blend technique it will take longer to render because we're going to have three lots of this footage all of which are going to have both an effect and a blend mode or certainly the top two will have an effect and a blend mode. So do bear in mind if you need to do this it's great but it will slow down your rendering process. So how do we do the filmic blend technique? Firstly we need to duplicate the footage twice and to duplicate footage in Premiere Pro CS6 you hold the Alt key or the Option key on a Mac click and drag so I'm taking one up and then I'm going to click and drag and take the second one up so I've now got three versions of exactly the same thing so now I need to add my blur and I'm just going to use the simple fast blur so I'm going to go to my effects panel and in the search box type fast and there is fast blur under blur and sharpen and I'm going to drag it actually to both of the top two clips so the video in video 2 and the video in video 3. Now I'm going to turn off the top layer at the moment so we're just looking at the video and video 2 that's all we can see because there's no blend modes we're just looking at video and video 2. Select that and go to the fast blur now if you remember before because this goes to the edge we must always repeat edge pixels so we click repeat edge pixels and we don't need to blur along the line but what we do need to blur is up and down so rather than going horizontal I'm going to go vertical and I'm going to choose two pixels so hit two and enter now that's blurred or softened the image which isn't what you think is ideal but when we decide to use a blend mode to blend it with the image below the gaps are going to be filled in with the blurs but we're not really going to see the blurriness we're going to see the sharpness of the image below so what do we do we select the middle one so this is video 2 and then we go to the opacity drop down drop it down and then we go to the blend modes and you can choose for this particular one either multiply or overlay what we're trying to do is create this depth of color so I'm going to choose overlay to start off with and instantly you can see how much deeper the colors are just by doing that one simple thing now that might be too strong if it's too strong if the effect is too great you've got the opacity value now I'm going to turn off the stopwatch because I don't want this animated at all so I turn off the stopwatch and I can pull this down a bit so that it's not too powerful so I'm going to take mine to about 70 percent okay so that's really given us a much richer color so if we just look at the original here by turning off that one that's the original and that's it blended but we've lost a little bit of the highlights so the second or the top layer here in video 3 is about adding back in the highlights so we turn on video in video 3 select it and go back to our fast blur and repeat the process so we click repeat edge pixels again we only really want to blur in the vertical and two pixels is certainly enough for what we want to do but this time when it comes to blending and bear in mind when we choose a blend mode it will blend with all the layers below not just the one directly below but both of the layers below it we want to choose one that's about lightening so I'm going to open up the twirly next to opacity again turn off the stopwatch not interested in animating it and I'm going to choose one of the lightening blend modes which are here under light and screen I'm actually going to choose screen now the initial result much too strong but what we want to do then is take opacity and reduce it right down till we get to roughly what we want to get to okay so I'm at 35 percent there so the original looks like this and that now to my eye looks fairly flat we then blended the bottom layer and we got a richness and we got the top layer and we got the brightness back in and you can see that you can see all the colors in the background that's a far richer and more powerful image than it was originally 
because we've used a filmic blend technique and this works with most video occasionally you'll do it and you think ah, is it worth doing it if it's not worth doing it don't do it because there is definitely a render hit when you use this but as you can see the end result can really make things very powerful and I've seen this done on wedding videos and when people do it with a wedding video initially you think it looks brilliant stick on the filmic blend technique and it just pops and looks really beautiful and at the end of the day when you're working with video you want your video to look beautiful you want it to pop and that's what I think we've achieved there again I'm just going to go back that's the original not a bad shot add in the other two and suddenly we've got something that looks even more powerful